Everybody, it's Tyler here at the official Week Zero event in Manchester, New Hampshire. Here with team number 88, TJ Square, coming out of Massachusetts. I'm here with Grant and Silver. And you got to check out this robot here at Week Zero. Incredible progress that they have here so far. Of course, we'll talk about the scoring system, uh, but some really cool programming things, including a Jetson, NVIDIA Jetson, talking about their AI. All this and more are coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Get ready to celebrate your Rapid React build season with Premiere Night on Saturday, February 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. This year, no matter where you are in creating your robot, submit a 90 second or less video celebrating your build season to Premiere Night. Submissions are due by the end of Thursday, February 24th, and you can get more details on any fun social channel or at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash Premiere 22. So we're gonna start out with the uh, intake. We'll kind of follow that cargo path as we go through. Talk to me about uh, some of the concept and the design of your intake and any maybe iterations throughout the season as well. Yeah, so it starts off with our intake here. Um, it's run off of motor instead of pneumatics. Um, so that's just on a pivot there. Um, so the ball would basically come up here. Um, this roller's really grippy and this one's looser because last year we had a lot of problems with, um, basically this one would stick and this one would stick too and it would just shove right up, it shove the ball right through this gap. Um, so that's our way to prevent that, to make this a bit slippier. So from a um, material choice on here, is the, the ball's not, the cargo's actually not contacting this, it's all about contact yeah, on this, right? exactly, yeah. So these are the only ones that actually touches. Um, this has some uh, rubber uh, sleeve on it. Um, this one is just the same tube, except without that rubber sleeve on it. And is this, uh, does this just drop down, stay down the entire match? Uh, yeah, uh, no, so it drops down, and then we can pick, yeah, we can pick it back up. Okay, so, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So take me into, as we start to hit kind of your indexing uh, area, talk to me about uh, choice of wheels. I'd love to hear more about your belts, uh, how that compression's working as it kind of goes up into your shooter. Yeah, so we did some uh, mechanum wheels here. So. That's a way to centralize the, the ball throughout the, the feeder. Um, so it comes in through the intake, it would just slide right over and um, gets fed right up to here. So these are actually separate. These belts here are separate from these. Um, so you can see those move. So the ball gets brought up here. We have some beam brakes. It detects the ball right there and just stops it. Um, if we need another ball, then it actually goes over to this piece. So now this part of the feeder would run up the ball up to this beam brake, which will stop right before the, the shooter. Well, let's put a piece of cargo in just so we can see some of that process work on that. Uh, I know we'll talk a little bit more about programming detail in a little bit too as we get into that, uh, but we'll see that uh, come down. Um, when you're looking at, uh, as we get that going, when we're looking at this year's challenge on it, uh, how different was this from like Infinite Recharge, so to speak? Because there's some similar aspects to it, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of differences were in the ball. There's a, the ball seems a lot harder than Infinite Recharge. So we had to build more of, um, the compliance in the mechanisms besides the ball. So last year the ball is really squishy, so you can have really stiff mechanisms. Um, this year the ball is not very squishy at all, so a lot of our compliance is in these belts or in these in these rollers. Well, we have less compression than we did last year. With, with the with your belt choice on here that you had to go through, uh, these are Vexpro belts on it. Had, did you have to do a lot of tweaking adjustments, or was it kind of just good to go right away? Uh, for we you? did we did some testing um, off to the side, and then we in the final CAD we just chose a number and went with it, huh? and it seems to be working out pretty well. So. Well, you got a great looking shooter as well, too. Talk to me a little about, uh, of course, it looks like adjustable hood. Yep. Uh, and then I'd love to hear about, like, if you know anything in regards to uh, the motors or compression maybe you're using between that, uh, anything else that goes into it. Yeah, so I don't know compression right now, but um, this is actually an adjustable hood. It's right now infinitely adjustable, but we're playing on just using two positions, really, because um, the limelight is mounted on that hood. Um, so when the hood goes up, the angle changes for the limelight, sure. makes it harder to program. So we're thinking about just two positions. Um, and then just doing the rest with a very speed on the, the, the flywheels there. And uh, back here, are these wheels powered as well to look like? Yes, yeah. So as these go, these are on a ratio so that they also spin and gives, gives the ball a little bit of spin, but not too much. We actually found that um, it was better to just throw the ball than to add spin, which would just actually make it, it wouldn't throw it as far. Yep. So as we're recording this, uh, you just played in your first match here at Week Zero, Ben. What have been general impressions so far after just one match? So this is actually the first time we drove it, too. So Wow, all right. Uh, yeah, so we, we were a little bit more tipsy than we thought. <laughs> um, but, you know, tell robot, so 
Um, yeah, I mean, the intake's working great. Yeah. That was the first time we tested that going, again, moving. Um, everything, it seems to be working, yeah, awesome. Great. Well, we haven't changed the, rotated the turret yet either, um, but. Yeah, and we'll, of course, see more of that as, as we go through. Oh, yeah, if you want to show off the adjustable hood, absolutely, yeah, so. that'd be great, so. So when you're looking at, at the game challenge, obviously the limelight working with the adjustable hood, right? Yep. Uh, from a priority standpoint, where was kind of the adjustable hood in that? Like, were you like, hey, we have to have something like this? Uh, how did that fit into your strategy? So now last year we had an, sort of an adjustable hood. We had an arm that would go up to adjust that angle there. Um, we knew we probably couldn't get away with doing the entire, so we wanted to be able to shoot from the entire field. Um, and to be able to do that, we probably couldn't do it with just a single angle. Sure. So we, we knew we had to have at least two positions. Um, and then we did a lot of testing with the angles there and decided that um, there's a certain point in the field where we can go and get away with doing the low and then the high position would be a second part of the field and just do the rest with the, the um, very speed. Well, let's move into your climber, talk to me a little about uh, some of it, what's gone into it and maybe what some of your objectives are with your climber as well. Yeah, so these, man, these, these were tough. So these are actually all pivoting arms. The yeah, look at, the, look at the gearing on this, this is, this is yeah. crazy, yeah. Yeah, so that, um, I don't quite remember the gearing on that, but it is, is very steep. Um, that we're planning on having these raise up, grab the mid bar, and then these would extend out to grab the high. It would translate the robot under the high. These would swing back under, then it would grab the uh, traversal bar and do the same thing, rinse and repeat, get up to the top. What's, uh, from a timing wise, what's kind of your objective of how many seconds to do that in? Um, so we did some calculations. Uh, we have a conservative six seconds. I look forward to seeing that. That's going to be yeah. awesome. So yeah. uh, as we start to wrap up your robot, we got some really cool stuff from AI to talk about and the uh, NVIDIA Jetson. So I'm going to bring Sylvie here to talk a little bit more about what's going on that on your robot. All right. Hi. So we have our NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX here. It's kind of like the big brother to the Jetson Nano. Um, so this device does a lot of path planning and computations that will tell the robot where to move. There are multiple LIDARs um, on the machine. We have one down here. So these spin and get a map of our surroundings. Uh, there's a second one back here underneath our climber. Uh, and on the other side, back here, we have what's called the Intel RealSense. This camera is a depth camera uh, with color vision. And we have it on a servo so that it can tilt up and look at the bars as well as track cargo and chase after if needed. So is that like a, a button you press and it just automatically does it? Or like uh, talk to me a little more yeah, how that working, process works? We are works. currently working on the tracking systems now. It's a little bit more progress to go on that, I'm sure. Anything else from a, a programming or a sensor standpoint? We talked a little about some of the beam breaks on your robot, but yeah, anything else that you want to cover? Encoders are a pain, we've learned. Um, we have an encoder on the turret. Um, we had to keep on doing math to figure that out. Sure. Um, it's, it was really difficult. But ev everything seems to be covered, yeah. Well, 88 TJ Squared, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot. Looking, once again, I mean, this is week zero and your team is looking fantastic. So I can't wait to see. Uh, you got a week one event uh, coming up awfully quick here in New England. So can't wait to see how you perform for that. So good luck, of course, for the rest of the competition season. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.